at the end of what has been a long and difficult season, David, it's ultimately meant relegation. A lot of fans have been pointing fingers. Who's to blame, do you feel? Well, um, I guess we win together, we lose together. Um, where we are uh, about blame it is a great question. I mean, we're all, at the end of the season, gutted, disappointed, uh, deeply frustrated and, I have to say, quite embarrassed that this great football club has suffered relegation. It's not what the fans deserve um, and it's not what we expected this year. So we are, um, like I say, all of those things. Um, as far as blame's concerned, uh, board, we recognise, the board recognises that we've made mistakes, no doubt about that. Um, I would say, of course, that we've made plenty of mistakes in the good years. But the mistakes this year have, have not helped and uh, we've suffered the disaster of relegation. Do you accept that one of those mistakes was staying with Chris Hewton for too long? Um, I can understand uh, supporters saying that and plenty have. It's one of those that you'll, you'll never be able to, uh, to, to know. Um, let's not forget that there, there were plenty of, of clamours for Chris to go at certain times during the season. Um, but when was the right time, particularly when you've invested more than we've ever spent uh, in the summer transfer window? Um, I mean, for me, that's probably one of the key reasons why we've had such a disappointing season um, in the five years that I've been involved with this great football club. We've always improved the squad uh, in, the, in, the transfer, in the summer transfer window. That hasn't happened this year, despite the seven signings uh, and record investments and smashing the transfer record a few times. Um, that didn't happen. We, uh, we didn't improve the squad with our summer investment, that's clear. And that's, and that's something that um, we have to take on the chin and learn from. Um, but having had that investment with the squad, with the manager, um, changing him very early in the season would have, been, would have been a difficult thing to do at that point. Um, and of course, I do understand supporters saying change the manager and they may well have been right, you know, in, with the benefit of hindsight, um, but of course, that's only a viable consideration if you have a plan B, a more effective plan B. And as you know, the best time to change a manager and to look at fundamental reshaping of the management team at a football club is during the close season. So from what you're saying there, that the reason you didn't change the manager earlier was that you weren't confident that you could get somebody who you felt would definitely do a better job. Well, I think if we go back to last summer, we finished 11th in the Premier League last year with the 20th um, biggest payroll in the league. Those are the facts. So we overperformed last year versus the financial investment. That's that's clear. So so Chris did a good job. So I think everybody accepted. I think most Norwich City supporters accepted that he deserved an, another go this season. Um, I'll reiterate that it's much easier and and it's much more sensible to change a manager in the close season. Um, you have more contenders, uh, and there may be. Um, different candidates who are available in the summer who are not available during the season. We've talked a lot about the past all through this season and the mistakes have been made. You know, the new championship season is only three months away, so time is of the essence. Let's start from, from the very top. Boardroom at Carrow Road, is that going to stay the same? Are, are you considering your own future? Um, that's interesting, isn't it? I mean, the, the first thing to say is that if I thought for one moment that me leaving would help this football club. I wouldn't hesitate. I, I care too much about Norwich City, having been here five years and, and invested a lot of time and effort in, in this great club. And, you know, this, you know, I love this club. So I also uh, am very pragmatic and I know that, that if I felt that it would, was in the club's best interest for me to leave, I wouldn't hesitate. Uh, I don't think that's the, the, in the best interest of the club at the moment. I think that, Why is that? Well, I, I think we've built quite a strong club in many aspects. We're now debt free. We, under no pressure to sell any, any player, we've got um, best in class people in um, off the field positions doing brilliant jobs for this football club and that's all been built in the last few years. So I think that we've got an opportunity to leverage that. Um, uh, and again, um, the, the other reason is that, that the board is united that we are absolutely up for the fight of trying to get the club back to the Premier League as soon as we can. We, um, we aim to do that um, by being competitive and we're following a process to bring in a manager to lead the, lead the club forward. We're also considering 
um, our broader football management structure because we think we've learned from some of the things that have not gone well for us this year so we're going to strengthen our football management structure um, and go through the next few days in searching for the new manager at Norwich City. You say searching but I notice in, in your statement this evening you have said there will be a new manager in place within a week so presumably that, that process is already underway and maybe you've identified the man have you? Uh, no, no we haven't we've got a short list we've got people that we're talking to people that we've spoken to um, Neil is a credible um, serious contender he's done uh, a very good job in very difficult circumstances talk about giving him a, a poison chalice with the five games that we did with four of the biggest teams in the world um, with a squad that he hadn't constructed uh, and let's face it a, you know a squad that's not been scoring goals 28 goals out of 38 league games tells its own story really so we didn't give Neil much of a, an opportunity to to go and win games but what we have seen is you know there's a, a manager of the future there and we've been very impressed with the way he's behaved on and off the pitch so Neil's a, a genuine contender uh, but we are talking to other people um, it's not a long list it's a short list and we aim to be through that process quickly three names four names on that list um, three or four names yeah and you're, you're confident the job will be done within the, the next week. The, the name that keeps coming up is, is Malky Mackay. I'm not going to keep going through individual names mm -hmm. with you, but that's one that keeps coming up. Is, is he on that list? Well, I'm sure that, that you know, there will be certain candidates to come up because they're, they're seen as being available. Um, but we, we don't look at it necessarily like that. There may well be managers that we're talking to who are available right now. There may be others that are at other football clubs. So um, it, out of respect to them, we'll certainly keep things private and confidential. Uh, let's look at the ramifications of, of relegation. You've talked a couple of times during the season as to how damaging it is for the mm -hmm. club. We don't know what's going to happen with players, who's coming, who's going. But behind the scenes at Carrow Road, it, this will mean job losses, won't it? Potentially, yeah. Potentially. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure of the final number of new jobs that we've created in the, in the three Premier League years, but it's probably 80-ish, 80 new jobs. Um, we're not going to dismantle all of the good work, but there will be some jobs that will go. I mean, that's the harsh reality of life in, in a business where you turn over halves overnight. I mean, approximately our turnover in the Premier League is 100 million-ish. Um, we, we're looking at 50 million in the Championship. So that's an awful scenario for any executive to have to manage uh, their way through. So there may well be jobs that go. Alongside that, though, that we are a well-run club and I think that's acknowledged by everybody. Um, every player has a relegation clause in their contract which means that they will have a relegation, um, there'll be a relegation impact on their salary. No exceptions so the whole squad are affected by that. Um, equally though there's no player that can walk out with a, a sweetheart clause based on relegation um, so we're under no pressure whatsoever to sell anybody. Um, I would expect us to trade, so I do expect some players to leave um, during the summer, um, but that's probably, um, well, the, those players are probably ones that we think are best served in furthering their careers elsewhere, because we'll need to bring in some better players to make this club um, much stronger. We can't afford to get this window wrong in the way that we got last summer's transfer window so horribly wrong. And the January transfer window as well, people look at that, Gutierrez and Yobo came in when perhaps an attacking player, a striker, you went down by three points, that may have made all the difference. Well I think we're going to look at our football management structure again to ensure that we are um, focusing the football manager on managing the first team and coaching in the first team, um, but we'll, we'll strengthen the structure so we're not at the mercy of a manager on all things to do with our future. We will look at we will look at you know, um, how we can ensure that if we do need to strengthen in a January transfer window where the money was there, uh, if we do need to bring in a number, number nine or a number ten, then that's what we do. The football management structure, reading between the lines, are you saying perhaps a director of football, somebody who would have more of a say, somebody who would control the transfer budget and make decisions on transfers? Well, I, th I, think, I think we're having a good look at it this week. Um, we've got... Um, we'll, will announce in due course, probably at the time that the manager's in place, which will be the sensible time to firm up on the, on the management structure. Um, but I do think there's perhaps one or two individuals here where too much of the weight of the key decisions of the football club 
rest on their shoulders and we need to spread that load. So we need to have um, some more talented people alongside us to help make those big key decisions. You're asking too much of Chris Hewton then. He, he, was, he was making all the key decisions when in hindsight perhaps he shouldn't have been. Um, well, we've, we've got a director of recruitment in Ewan Chester, so clearly, I mean, Ewan's as experienced as anybody in his position, so um, we're also relying on him to come up with uh, the right recruitment strategy. Um, but I do think in, in, the, in the top leagues in this country, you need to have to, you, if, sorry, your first team manager just needs to focus on uh, the players in the first team squad and the coaching of those players, they shouldn't have to worry about medicine and sports science and sports analysis and recruitment. It should all be, um, th those are the very important tasks should be managed elsewhere. A final point, you've paid great tribute to the supporters in your, in your statement. A lot of the supporters are angry, that they want answers, they, they see relegation this year as entirely avoidable. I mean, what is your final message to them? Well, firstly, I think relegation this year was entirely avoidable um, and we've got it wrong and we've made mistakes. Um, we win together, we lose together and so um, we, we are very fortunate that we've got the best supporters. They are, have they follow, followed us in their, in their thousands across the country again and I'm sure they'll do the same next season as we attempt to um, take the club forward again. Um, our message to them is thank you for the support and we're really sorry that we got it wrong this year. David McNally, thank you for talking to us.